everybody, it's Amanda from scrimpingmommy.co.uk and today we're going to make a lovely project and have some fun with these craft pillow boxes. They're ready made and they come in a pack of ten. Saves you lots of time bothering making them yourself. Uh, but, you know, you just flip the lid, it's all scored and you put your goodies in and you're good to go. But that's it's a bit boring uh, and I like to use things for different reasons. So I'm going to get a pair of scissors first of all and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold that top fold in and just reinforce that crease and proper nip in it. Okay, so I want to be able to see that crease. Fold it back out, turn it on its side and fold it that way and then I'm going to cut that away. So I'm almost folding it in half but without actually creasing it and I'm going to cut that away. I can hear my mum in my head when I was a child saying Amanda use things for their proper purposes. Um, no, I like to see if I can do different things with stuff. So now we've got that shape, okay? Now you'll, you'll be able to see on the thumbnail what I've made. It's not a new idea. Um, they're all over but um, I have come up with how to transform these pillar boxes. So you look where the score line is there on the bottom half and we're going to cut it away. Um, let me just have a look and I'm going to go to where the point is and I'm going to count up five dots. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do the same at the other side and I'm going to make a tiny little mark with a marker pen. So uh, one, two, three, four, five there and one, two, three, four, five there. And all that'll do is that'll help me get a fairly even shape. But I'm not measuring it. <laughs> I've got time for that. So now I'm just going to cut round, but I'm cutting a, I'm cutting above this scar line because I want to cut that away. But I'm just cutting a rough sort of rounded, curved shape totally by eye and it does not matter if it's not perfect right don't throw that bit away because we're going to use it so the first thing we're going to do is secure that bottom I'm going to use Tombow I think because we're going to put things inside if we use tape or double sided tape there's the the danger that the things will get stuck to the tape if it protrudes a bit so if we use glue that shouldn't happen okay I'm just going to glue that shut. I'm just going to smear it a right little bit. Make sure it's in the corners. Okay. And just hold that shut while that dries a minute. Okay. So we've got like a little pouch now. Okay. So we're going to get our handle part. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a handle. Um, like so. So you just eyeball it, okay? Now you want a bit of a gap there and you want to cut this bit away or you could just turn it that way if you're not bothered about that. You could just leave it. In fact, I think I will. <laughs> so again, I'm counting about three, about three up, maybe four, but I'm going to cut quite deep into the curve to give a very defined uh, one, two, three, one, two, three dots at one side and three dots at the other. Just so I know where I'm aiming for to cut out so it's kind of even. So if you've decided you're not cutting that bit away, glue it down, glue it flat. Little bit of glue, glue that flat. Okay. And that is now your handle. Now you can stick that on there with whatever you like. I think I'm going to just use probably glue. Just a little dot there. And a little dot there. It should hold. It's only decorative. Okay. Eyeball it. And hold that while it adheres. And you've got yourself a little cup. And then I'll show you what we're going to do because we're going to decorate it. And I'm also going to do the packaging for you, so if you watch the video all the way through, um, I will show you how to package it nicely as well. Okay, so that's stuck now. So now I've got my little cup shape. So I'm going to decorate it with, I'm going to use Making Christmas Bright. It's a lovely, lovely set. As I say, it has a coordinating punch. 
So let's bring in some cardstock. And I also need, just let me just run and get, no, <laughs> I've forgotten that. Forgot to get a piece of green cardstock. Oh, I've got everything else ready. Right, so I've already mounted what I want on blocks so I can stamp everything out. Uh, first of all, we're having May Your Christmas Be and then we're going to stamp Merry and Bright. Okay. So the colours that I've chosen are Poppy Parade, Pineapple Punch and Shaded Spruce. And I'm going to stamp in Poppy Parade and then I'm going to back it on Shaded Spruce. So, that's upside down. I'll give that a stamp. Beautiful. Lovely font as well. Lovely and swirler. Okay, let me just bob that away. And then I'm going to punch that out. I worked out that you can punch it out just about with the one and three quarter inch punch. And it will fit round. Okay. And then a piece of shaded spruce and this is a two inch so we're just going a little bit bigger okay move that out the way don't need that now we're going to layer them up layer those up a couple of doodah what's it i mean sure. yeah. a couple of dimensionals Just gives a nice little border. Try and get it straight, Amanda. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can just glue it on. You don't have to use dimensionals if you don't want. I just want it to look really cool. And I think if you lay things up and pop them up on dimensionals, it just looks that little bit more fun. And they're not expensive. So this is going in the far corner up here. Okay. And then we're going to decorate the bottom half. So I'll just move my dimensionals while we do some more stamping. Let me just put that actually so it's straight instead of on the wonk. Okay. Um, you could like put some gems on. I'm keeping my cost down because I'm thinking of craft fairs. So we're going to do Merry and Bright here. I've got them loaded up on blocks. Now when you're punching, it punches the right way up, but it... Um, you, I'm punching these bits, I'll stamp these bits separate, it's just easier. <laughs> so I'm going to do one in each colour. So I've got shaded spruce, I've got pineapple punch and I have got poppy parade. Okay. So what we got here? Uh, does that say and? And. Let me just think. Okay, so you need to stamp upside down. <laughs> I just had to just double check then. Do you? Or is it that way? That's that way. So, yep, you need to stamp upside down and then when you punch it, it will be the right way. Oops, I'm not in short, am I? Sorry. So, stamp upside down and then when you come to punch, it will punch it out nicely. Just like that, okay? Let me just line it up nicely. Okay. And I will stamp on that separately and just leave that to one side. So let me do one in the other colours now. So we've done and. Uh, I think we'll have the mirror in the green. So stamp upside down. That's the mirror, and then we'll have bright in the yellow. Stomp it upside down, move those out of the way now. Just quickly close my inks. I've got used to these new ink pads now, I do love them. They are, they, they just store nicer, they look more on trend, they look more flush, they, and the ink's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to punch these out now. 
Really quickly. There will be a way, some clever stamper will have thought of a way of punching them all out and stamping them at the same time. You can probably lay a, line the stamps up inside here so you know exactly where they go and then use your stamperators. I, I, I haven't got time for that. <laughs> I like to just punch and go me. Right, so that's those. Now these little bits here, you've got this little like bit there. I don't know if I can be bothered with that. I don't know if I'm going to use it. I think I'm just going to stick them straight on. But these, if you, I'll stamp one so you can see. If you stamp them in crumb cake. Just line it up. It gives you that little bottom of the light bulb thing. And then you glue that on there. Like so. I can't be bothered to do that. I'm thinking if I'm doing a craft fair and I'm making loads of these, it's not necessary. You can just have it like that, it'd be fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some twine on here. And I'm using the Garden Green Baker's twine, so I think it's lovely. And I'm going to see how much I need. And I'm going to stretch it across there. Um, I do want to just tie it in a little bow if I can. Let's see if I can manage it. Oh, ask, it's a big ask this isn't it but it's quite uh, easy to work with is the twine it's, it's not as fiddly as some of the other thinner stuff right so that's that and then I'm going to use a glue dot I think so let me get my quirky tool My take your pick tool, get my glue dot, place it where I want it, want it there I think, and I'm just going to roll it a little bit so it's not showing, and then I'm going to put my bow on there, okay, give it a good press, there we go, and then I want it to come down here. And that's going to be the, that's going to be the, uh, so as far as I've thought, just in case you're wondering, what I might do is, I'll have the final bulb holding that down rather than have two bows, because I'd have to tie it in a strategic way, which would be absolutely not a problem if you've got a little bit more time, but when I'm filming, I need it to be quick. So I'm going to put that about there, just at the bottom of the handle. And then press my my baker's twine there, and then we're going to get these fellas, and we're going to mount them on some dimensionals. Uh, well, the large ones, yeah, you can put it on the large ones. So Mera goes first. Okay, so we'll have Mary there. May our Christmas be merry and bright, it's going to say. Merry. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick bright on first at the bottom and then I can assess an equal distance um, for the middle one. So that's bright, so that's going on the bottom there. See, I'll just tuck that end of that in. And then because I've done them two, then I can assess easier where the middle is so that I'm not getting them. Looking wonky. Merry and bright. Oh, how lovely is that? Okay, really simple, really easy. So I'll show you what we're going to put in it. Let me just move all of my garbage. So, um, you can get these from Stampin' Up, which I've had a while, and these are 2 by 8 inch cellophane bags. Um, or you can, you know, buy pre-made sachets. One idea is tea bags. Okay. I'm making hot chocolate, but you know, I'm making my own. These, this can be a gift. If you're doing a craft fair, um, you might need to buy them, you know, pre, like sachets, rather than making your own, due to health and hygiene reasons. I'm sure there'll be a law out there that says you have to, uh, you know, have some sort of certificate. So buy ready-made sachets. I don't have any. 
and I'm not going to sell these. I'm going to poison my friends and family with my germs. So I'm making my own. So I'm putting some drinking chocolate in there. In these little, these little baggies. Okay. Probably just about enough for one, one serving. We've got, oh, I think I need to go get some more chocolate. Okay. There we go. There's enough there for one. <laughs> right, I've got hot chocolate on my desk now. Never mind. Give it a twizzle. Okay. We're going to use some. What, what shall we use? Shall we use Baker's twine? Um, or shall we use some now? I'll carry on with the Baker's twine because this is not expensive. So if you're making lots of gifts, but you could tie ribbon as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My hot chocolate. Tie it in another knot. And then tie it in a bow. Might want to wash your hands first so you don't get a uh, chocolate coloured twine. <laughs> okay. Trim that a bit. And then I do have some of these scissors with the fancy edge. So I'm just going to cut that across so it's got a serrated sort of edge and then that will go in there in fact I might cut it even a bit smaller yeah so that will go in there so that's my chocolate my hot chocolate and I'm also going to put a little bar of Hershey's in okay so you've got should be room there I'll just flatten that out a bit chocolate and Hershey's Okay, so if you were doing a craft fair, let's get it packaged up. Don't forget, you could put anything you want in there. You could put marshmallows, tea bags, just sweeties, coffee, anything you want. Right, let's have a look. So I'm going to package mine using the cellophane bags, six by eight. You can get these and you get 50, so you're getting loads, plenty. So, will it fit that way? No, so I'm going to put it in that way. So I'm going to pop that in there like so. Um, okay. Now it's a little on the large side, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it over. And what shall I stick it down with? I'll use some nice washi tape. We'll have this nice red one here. And you get like a set of, I think it's five. So let's use one of these and just make that bag fit okay. and just fold that over just need to think on that it needs to be nice and straight at the top so don't wrap it around too tight okay stick that down with some washer like so okay so now we're going to make a top off so let's measure our bag we're making it up as we go along now <laughs> so with our bag folded over if i measure it from the bottom it'll be easier the way that i've done it we're using the design that i've used makes it to four inch measure yours and see what yours is and just go um half an inch Okay, half an inch bigger. So that's four. So I'm going to go four and a half. I might actually go a quarter of an inch. Um, no, nope, I'll go half. So four and a half. So I'm going to get my cutter. I'm going to use some scrap. So if I want it four and a half inch by four and a half by. Um, Four and a half by 
two and a half. No. Um, yeah. Four and a half by two and a half. I'm doing mine. Obviously, you make yours to fit you and whatever design you've decided to do. Now, it's two and a half. I want to be able to fold it over, so I'm going to score it at one, which leaves me one and a half inches then to um, stamp on. So let's move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. I'm going to round my corners. Uh, and the largest part is going to be at the front. Get that flush in. Okay. So I'm going to stamp this one, which is from the Merry and Bright as well. And it's like a garland of lights. So we're going to stamp that. I'm going to stamp it in. Ooh, what colour shall we use? We'll use grey granite because it's my favourite neutral when I don't want to use black. I have to take my ink to the stamp and giving it everywhere. That's because my table's not straight. And then just go across the middle. Like that. Okay, and that's made me some lights. And then I do have some of the Stampin' Right markers. I've got them in the same colours that I've done these. I've got uh, the, um, that one's Call Me Clover. I actually used shaded spruce ink. That one is Pineapple Punch and that one is Poppy Parade. And I'm just going to, using the thin tip, I'm just going to gently, quick as I can, colour those in. I'm not making a right good job of that. Let me try this end. Yeah, I, I, I find the brush tips easier. So green, yellow, red. Green, yellow, red. Green, yellow, red. Okay, so that's that one. Green. Oh, I've gone out of sync there. Oh, never mind. I thought that loop was a, was a, <laughs> a light. Never mind. Okay, and then yellow. Get off! Rolling all over the place. I don't know. Okay. That. And there. Let's fold and burnish. And then we can uh, we can actually attach it with the um, Snail will work perfectly fine. So put it with the back there so you can line your bag up. And line it up central as you can. And fold that down. And you've got your packaging. I've done mine terribly straight, well done. That's a little bit better. Okay. So why not, uh, we'll just do the um, Making Spirits Bright for the top, um, which is, where's it gone, it's under there, Making Spirits Bright, just finish that off so that it looks really, really lovely, thin block, line it up, Let's so, get my scrap in again and I'm going to use Poppy Parade. Make sure I've got it the right way up. Stamp in the far bottom corner so it's fairly straight already. Like so. There we go. Oh, got some washi tape on my scissors. Get off. <laughs> if you want to be really precise, you can do this cutting on your trimmer. Okay, which that is about as straight as a 
three pence piece. And let me straighten it up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm jet lagged, okay? I can't cut straight. And I also just can't cut straight. I'm not going to worry. Do yours on your trimmer. <laughs> Do it on your trimmer. <laughs> and then it'll be straight. Go for a straight edge. I always go for the straight edge just to try and help me cut straight. It doesn't always work, but I am rushing um, for the sake of the video. So you take just that little bit more time and you'll get it straight. It won't be a problem. Okay. So if I just cut straight up there. And then... And cross there with my wonky sentiments. <laughs> And then we can finish it off by sticking it up on some dimensionals, one at each end. And then you are good to go. And where should we put it? Oh, I like it up there. No, I don't want to see them. Mm. Yeah, move it up there. There we go, and we, we're doing, we're good to go. You, you could maybe stamp another row of lights down there, that might look a bit better. But there you go, start to finish, that is your chocolate mug. Hot chocolate and chocolate coffee mug. Give it a try, easy peasy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, bye for now.